Hold on. for murdering one of uh, his great great songs and one of my favourite songs, Hey Hey My My um, and we'll come to Neil Young later because uh, today it's the last of uh, this alphabetical tour through the uh, vinyl collection behind me and we've got X, Y and Z so uh, three letters uh, a day and to kick us off um, this is XTC, English, the English Settlement, uh, a double album, beautifully packaged actually, and uh, really nice uh, artwork and lyrics and everything on it. And um, yeah, XTC are a band. Um, I went to see them in the in the Mayfair in Newcastle in nineteen seventy nine. I think it was September, October, or something like that. Nineteen seventy nine. And at the time, um, I suppose I was getting fed up with the, the way the punk, old punk thing had sort of fizzling out into uh, either sort of poppy stuff or this sort of new wavy stuff and I was getting a bit disillusioned with it. And I thought these were sort of, they were okay, punky, jittery, skittery, sort of noisy, poppy band that just had their single making plans for Nigel. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really get into them, and I didn't listen to any more of their stuff after that uh, gig. And this, but this album came out three, two and a half years after that, in 1982. Uh, and this is a much fuller, more rounded sort of sound. You've still got that edgy sort of stuff, but it is much more rounded and and much more satisfying, I think, for that. Um, and XTC was sort of led, main songwriter and, and singer, uh, a guy called Andy Partridge, very, very talented guy. Um, he'd had a bit of a troubled start in life, I think as a kid, I think his, his, his mum had had mental health problems, she'd sort of rejected him and one thing or another, he lived on a council estate in Swindon. Um, and uh, this is, uh, it's a sort of, personal album, a lot of his songs on it, um, tell the stories of the, 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 the situation he found himself in. It's very much part of, sort of Thatcher's Britain. Thatcher was two, three years into a premiership and the sort of themes on the the songs here, um, you know, abused kids running away from home, uh, domestic violence, um, having a violent racist as a son, in your house, uh, on, there are no thugs in this house. Uh, right wing economics and the impact of them on um, on, uh, on 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 working class communities. Um, suburban life itself. He sings a song called Roundabout about uh, life in the sort of Swindon type places, I suppose. Um, and one also spending it a bit further about gun ownership in in the United States. So, you know, pretty pretty tough sort of themes, but all delivered with a, um, you know, some really quite intricate, complex, but catchy sort of hooks. The, the main single, there were a couple of singles from this album, um, Senses Working Overtime was the, the main one, and that's, yeah, that's a great song, but there are, there are lots of good songs on this album. It's a really, um, 
really glad I've come back to it because I've enjoyed listening to it a few times in preparation for this video and I think I'll I will keep listening to it it uh, it is very very rewarding so that's XTC the English settlement from 1982 um, the next one Neil Young and I could have held up any of Neil Young's albums I suppose uh, you know going back I've got them there or all the way back to Harvest and uh, after the gold rush of, of course but uh, I've decided to hold this one up this is homegrown and although this was only released last year on record store day 2020 it was actually made in 1974 um, this is the album that was meant to follow on the beach uh, another great album um, so it was it was actually yeah 47 47 years ago um, and Neil Young at the time was uh, he was going through the breakup of his 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 marriage to the actress Carrie Snodgrass, who was mother to his first son Zeke, and uh, the, a lot of the songs were about that relationship on this album, and he decided it it was just too painful he couldn't bear uh, releasing it, so it stayed uh, in the vaults as it were. Uh, for all those 46, 47 years until uh, he decided to dust it off and um, remaster it. And I, and I think a word for the remastering and restoration here, um, uh, let's see, uh, no, I can't see, it. it's on the other, it's on the inner sheet I think, but they've done a real good job. I mean all Neil Young's albums sound brilliant, but I think some of the recent stuff the old stuff that he's dug back out and reissued uh, sounds absolutely immaculate. This this plays really, really well, really clear, really lots of separation between the instruments. It's a very sparse, minimalist sort of production, which I like. Um, he's got some great guests on it. He's got Levon Helm and Robbie Robertson from the band. Uh, Robbie Robertson plays some lovely guitar uh, with Neil Young on um, White Lines. Um, he's got Emmylou Harris on there. Um, I particularly like um, Separate Ways, Try, um, Kansas, um, White Line, which I mentioned with Robbie Robertson and Little Wing. But it's it's a really good album. It is it it was a great pre period in the sort of early mid 70s for Neil Young he produced some brilliant albums and this stands right up uh, along with the very best of them so that's Neil Young homegrown technique from 2020 but uh, made in 1974 and then lastly uh, Warren Zevon Z Warren Zevon um, this is the envoy from 1982 and I've got to say, this is um, not, I don't think anyway, Warren Zevon's best uh, album by any stretch. Uh, uh, I think his first album, which is entitled Warren Zevon, I think, and his last album before he died, The Wind. Uh, try those if you if you want to, to hear some of his best work. Or, or maybe the one or two albums which preceded this. He, he released a couple in 80, 81 which I think were stronger than this, but it's still a good album and some really good songs on it. Uh, he's a great writer, he's, a, he's very, very literate, he's got a caustic wit. Uh, you might be aware that he, of course, sang uh, American Werewolf in London, um, you know, a lot, along with the film there, but he, he wrote that and, and performed that, that, that song. On this one, uh, I particularly like the Hula Hula Boys, um, Jesus Mentioned, Let Nothing Come Between Us, um, Looking For The Next Best Thing. Um, he's got some great guests on this album as well, uh, Don Henley, Lindsay Buckingham, Graham Nash. Um, so yeah, it's a real good album, but uh, his others I've only got on CD, so I'm holding this one up because it is the only album I've got of the letter Z other than ZZ Top, and I didn't really want to hold them up because yeah, great beards guys, but I mean for me they're they're a, they're a, a decent pub blues band with a 
with a one trick gimmick, gimmick, you know, the, the ability to grow really long beards. But uh, yeah, harmless fun. But Warren Zevon's in another another league altogether. A great, great artist. Um, his last album, The Wind, I would I would highly recommend you give that one a try if uh, if if you want to look him up. So that is the tour from A to Z. It has been a bit of a uh, uh, a trek. As they say. I didn't realise quite realise the alphabet was so long. So thanks uh, to those uh, few who've uh, watched along with me. I've really uh, enjoyed the process of doing them. I've digging through my records and re-listening to some I haven't picked up for quite a while. Uh, I've loved it and uh, I enjoy making these little videos and I'll, 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 I'll review some of these and try and improve them I think for my next uh, project. So the Vinyl Monkey uh, isn't going to uh, fade away um, as, as Neil Young said uh, Hopefully I'll, I will burn out one day, but uh, well I will burn out one day, but not fade away. Uh, I will be back. Maybe more opinions than facts in the future. I don't know. That might be more interesting or uh, uh, controversial. Um, but anyway, thanks again for watching them. Cheers.